decided to do something very different than I usually do. I have been dreading painting lately, and so I thought choosing to do something completely different from what I have always done might make me love it again. And I think this worked. I created a brand-only palette, so this may not work for someone that does that all the time. But having to find the colors that I needed and wanted, needed first, not wanted first, in one single brand was actually kind of difficult for me. And it got those creative juices flowing. It got the idea of finding a way to create a color instead of going to my go-to colors for that was a lot of fun. I used Winsor & Newton because I don't have a lot of experience with this brand in particular. I usually use Renaissance and M. Graham, which I've heard is hard to find, um, not in the U.S. I don't love Daniel Smith. I was trying to figure out who I would use. And then I remembered I haven't really used Winsor & Newton since Cotman days. And Cotman really doesn't do this brand justice. So I picked out several colors, then I narrowed it down as you just saw, and then I even played around with certain colors I wasn't sure I needed, uh, put that in a sketchbook, and used some mixes to make sure it really gave me something extra, something I couldn't just mix with the other colors. And I even added a couple more than the 18 that I should have stuck with. I added Indian Red, because I love its mix with Cerulean. But here I'm showing you why that permanent mauve was already in the palette before I started pouring. They were overfilled tubes. And when I opened them, just to see what their color was like, they just decided to explode out, and I had to put it somewhere so it didn't go to waste. I knew I was going to love this palette I put together while swatching it, but the Indian yellow was such a huge disappointment. I have to see if I can find it in um, a pan already poured, because this is the only color that didn't set up when I let it dry overnight. It flaked. It didn't stay where I put it. It wasn't easily rewettable. And not because it didn't have the burst of color, but because it didn't have any ability to stay still to be incorporated with the water. It was very disappointing because I really love this color. And I did think before I put this video out that I might scrape it out and put a different color in, but I couldn't bring myself to because I couldn't find another yellow with that warmth to replace it. So it's still in here if you guys have a good suggestion of another Windsor & Newton yellow that I might be able to replace this with, please let me know. I chose cool and warm yellows, reds, I even put in a convenience purple, but mostly because this mauve has like this amazing granulation and uh, makes some really cool, fun mixes with blues and reds and really just anything. One of the colors you saw me debate earlier was this green gold. I love green gold in a palette. I genuinely do. But because I don't paint skin tones as often as fur or feathers. It was harder to allow myself to give in and put this in a palette, but it just adds such a brightness to any of its mixes. I couldn't help it myself. 
I was really nervous about putting PG-18, which is genuine Viridian, in this palette, but this one in particular from Windsor Newton rewets so beautifully, and it's amazing in mixes. I'm really excited to be able to use it for foliage or backgrounds. This portion of the palette was harder to pick, not necessarily the blues, because I came to really love their selection, but the earth tones. I paint a lot of animals, it's kind of what I do, and picking earth tones from a brand I'm not used to was a little bit stressful. I kept this selection limited, uh, much more limited than I normally have my selection of earth tones on a palette, because I really wanted this to be unlike any other palette I have. I'm quickly falling in love with their Burnt Umber. I like how bright their Burnt Sienna is, but I know it's a PR 101, so people uh, think it's the devil or something. Um, but I think their Windsor Newton Neutral Tint might be my newest favorite neutral tint, and I didn't think anyone was going to um, dethrone M. Graham for that, so I'm pretty excited about it. In this piece, I really tried to use some techniques that I'm a little less comfortable with. Um, I felt like it would really... Do you hear that? It's my cat eating in the background. On my desk, I might add, he chooses this time to eat out of that bowl. And I know I shouldn't put a bowl of cat food on my desk. I understand that I'm asking for that. but. He's so clingy that he will cry on my desk for food if I'm working. So I've given in to the terrorists. I have absolutely given in to them. Anyway, sorry, back to the... I, I tried to use more wet and wet with this piece because I've noticed that my feathers tend to be really stiff. And I, I don't know if that helped them that much this time, but... I do know that it allowed it to flow, create uh, textures and shadows a lot better than if I had tried to have absolute control over every stroke and movement of the pigment. I um, started really light on the beak because I didn't start with the eye this time, which usually helps me figure out... Um, where my darkest tones are going to be on the piece. And so I struggled a lot with the beak on this macaw for a good amount of time. I kept going back to it, I kept darkening it, because I was trying to approach this completely differently than I would normally approach any other piece. And I really enjoyed it. 
So I think getting out of my comfort zone is something that I need to work on doing more often. mostly finished with the beak. I wanted it to stand out just as much as the eye does and really reverse engineer my process. Um, actually, that can't be the right phrase, but I wanted to do everything backward. I wanted to set the darkest darks long before I got to the eye. My patrons used to say that I always created a pirate unless the animal that I was painting was a side view or a three quarter view and I was already only getting the pleasure of painting one eye I would always start with an eye and then leave a pirate until the very end I don't know that it will ever change uh, how I naturally want to paint something the right most focus and then moving on to the left and eyes have always been that for my paintings it's probably why I struggle so much with landscape or uh, still life which I'm starting a whole sketchbook just for still life and landscape stuff and I would love to share some of my struggles in there with you if you guys have any interest Please let me know down in the comments if that's something you guys would want to see or if you just want me to paint what I'm already good at painting or at least passably good at. Um, I will respect your wishes on that. This wet on wet green feathers section was so much fun. I really need to start planning out and not painting as intuitively as I usually do because I have found myself really enjoying letting the watercolors flow like they're supposed to and I just don't plan well enough. I, I kind of go on instinct and I kind of just move really fast through my paintings and I forget to give it a second to figure out where I'm going next and prepare that area. I don't know if anyone else feels my pain on that but I just move to the next place and then I'm like oh I, I need to wet around this so it's not such a harsh line but I've already done it so that may be why I paint so much on cold press it seems to be more forgiving uh, to my impulsivity I really like this blue this is Windsor blue and it just packs a bunch I believe it's PB 15-3 so it's just your regular uh, phthalo, but it's like brighter.
than most of the ones I've used, and I had a lot of fun painting with it. It moved just enough to be flowy without overrunning where I wanted it to be put. I love painting birds and feathers because it's a, a challenge and there's a lot of interpretation that you can play around with. But I chose this piece in particular for this palette I just built because I wanted to use the fun colors. And sure, I get to use the fun colors in shadows and areas of reflection, but there are many times when I'm just not able to utilize all the beautiful colors that I own. And I can't seem to stop myself from buying them because they're pretty and like a magpie, I collect things that I like. However, every once in a while, I just want to use the brighter end of the color spectrum. So this macaw uh, was a fun way to use, granted, a fairly limited range of those bright, pretty colors, but it was a chance to use them. I have sketched a couple parrots, um, and I'm looking at possibly painting one of those fairly soon as well with this palette but I also want to use it for the still life that I'm playing around with uh, that I mentioned earlier and I want to use it just because all of those colors inspire me before I moved into this yellow I was very very excited to get to use the I think it is transparent yellow and the Indian yellow together because one is bright and vivid and moves the other colors because it's a PY150 and the other is just so sunny and warm so I was excited to play with those together in a wet on wet area around the neck and chest of this macaw and I really did enjoy it. I pre-wet the Indian yellow to let it soak so that I didn't have to fight tiny little crusty bits of Indian yellow. I probably will end up mixing a bit of like a humectant into the Indian yellow just so that it'll stay put on the palette. It's just such a disappointment. I was so excited about this color and having to doctor it is just a little disappointing. I used scarlet red and Indian yellow to create depth in these feathers, to give us little peaks under feathers that are ruffling up. I chose to paint in this wing, this shoulder of this macaw, with a mix of Windsor blue and Indian throne. I really felt a warmer blue mixed in would maybe convey the depth of the larger feathers here. And then after I covered the whole area in a nice wet on wet wash of this blue, I went in with more pure Indian Throne to kind of carve out those larger feathers. I tried to create the shadow and the depth that I see here, often getting to tease out the pigment with water to make sure that that line wasn't so harsh. But I really loved painting this. I really enjoyed it. The whole painting took me about an hour and a half, I think, and that is not including the multiple breaks I would take. 
because I tend to wander while one layer dries. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe and like the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.